All right, guys, quick trick that I use in my using a vector product node. Now, I use these from time to time to convert regular rotations that you all know and love into vector directions. Now, a good example of this would be wind direction if you're doing a cloth simulation. So if you've ever tried to control the direction of wind using these attributes by putting in values from negative 1 to 1 in each of the directions, it can be quite tedious. I mean, you do get a little arrow here on the nucleus that shows you the direction, but you can't freeform rotate it very easily. You know, you can do this with the nucleus to get some left and right motion, but as, as soon as you want some up and down, you're, you're shifting the, uh, the gravity and it's going to throw your whole simulation off. So in this situation, I use this node so I can control this wind in kind of a freeform rotation here. So it just converts that vector for me. You see, if I rotate that, it's, it's controlling the wind direction there. And if I play the simulation, I'll roll back here a bit, you can see it's blowing the wind in the direction that uh, I point this arrow. And I can animate this very easily and very quickly it takes a lot of the uh, headaches away from simulations when I when I use that setup. So this um, vector product node also works with other vector attributes. So you could plug this into gravity, like another one into gravity if you wanted to, for some reason. Uh, you could plug it into certain real-time shaders that have uh, directional light inputs that are vector directions. Uh, you know, things like that. So you'll, you'll come across those from time to time that are difficult to control, and this method will help you out with that. So all you do is you create this node called a vector product node, and it is found under utilities right here, and right at the bottom you'll see vector product. And you want to plug in your uh, world matrix right there directly from your uh, transform node, whatever you want to use to control it, that's going to go straight into the matrix attribute of the vector product node. And then you want to set your vector product node to vector matrix product, which is the fourth option down, and set everything to zero except for Z input one, set that to negative one. And then you want to connect your output from the vector product node into whatever vector attribute you want to use. So in this case, I just plugged it directly into wind direction. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So it's a little trick that I use to, to get around that kind of stuff and it speeds me up quite a bit. So hopefully you found that useful and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. All right, guys. See ya.